Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward, and this is Face to Face. Our guest this week is the recently elected Grand Chief of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, Kathy Merrick. Merrick made history when she was selected as Grand Chief by the AMC, becoming the first woman to lead the organization. She is a former chief and counselor of Pimichikamak Cree Nation in northern Manitoba. Merrick takes the reins of the AMC after the former Grand Chief, Arlen Dumas, was voted out over allegations of workplace misconduct and sexual harassment. Grand Chief Merrick, thanks so much for being with us and congrats on your new role. Thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, how are the early days uh, going so far? Oh, the early days are really fast and furious and uh, um, meeting with a lot of people, a lot of uh, organizations that, uh, that have been waiting for, for AMC to, to, come, to come to the the table with them as well, yeah. Uh, as you saw in the video there, uh, you were quite emotional after uh, being elected on the second ballot. Uh, what does it mean to you to be the first woman to hold the title of, of Grand Chief of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs? It means a lot to me. It uh, means a lot to my heart that uh, the Chiefs of Manitoba, Assembly of Manitoba, have selected me to to represent them in in uh, in taking them forward in listening to them and working with them so it means a lot to me what was going through your mind when your name was uh, read out on that second oh, it was so uh, it was so exciting and I was very calm usually I, I get very emotional but I got emotional after and uh, and then it hit me that actually um, the, uh, the Grand Chief for the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, and I've worked with the Chiefs prior when I was in leadership as well, so uh, it was really nice to be able to talk to them and to be able to, to speak with them, to, to, uh, to work with them, to be able to work with them again, so it meant a lot. What do you think it means for other women uh, and those in leadership roles and, and youth to see that, you know, this organization, the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, has been around for decades, but to see that you are the first uh, woman to lead it? I've heard a lot of good comments from a lot of young women that uh, I'm the role model and that I'm able to, uh, to break barriers where there were barriers prior to that and uh, which is good that, I, they, that they be able to look up to me and that I'm able to, to work with them too as well from, from, uh, from being the Grand Chief. Uh, according to Indigenous Services Canada, we reached out to them and they say that there are 170 female chiefs in First Nations in Canada and nearly 500 and, or 522 uh, male chiefs. Uh, any thoughts uh, on those numbers? They've increased for, for, for a very long time because prior to that, uh, a lot of our nations didn't have w women leaders and we kind of paved way for a lot of young women to, to come to to be in politics and to be able to to take that uh, that step and that we support and as women we need to support each other when we take on these these roles these very important roles for for our children that are looking up to us and for our youth that are looking up to us and one of the excitement uh, one of the exciting things for myself was uh, when I did win there was uh, the school, one of the schools in, uh, in Cross Lake, and they were uh, listening to, to me winning, and they all yelled, and they all screamed in happiness that I was actually, so it really touched my heart that uh, they were able to, to show that and to, to be able to hear that. Pima Chickamack now has two uh, Grand Chiefs in Manitoba at the moment. Is that, uh, do you think, inspiring for, for youth uh, in the community? Yes, I think so. We're uh, uh, we're very uh, we're very supportive of each other as a community, 
and uh, I heard it throughout the assembly that uh, there was a lot of cross Lake people there and they were supporting our elders were there and they gave me that reassurance that everything is going to be okay so it really gave me that uh, that motivation to even try 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 harder and just to be around with the chiefs yeah and of course, uh, Garrison Sati, the other uh, Grand Chief of Manitoba, Kuwait, and Aoki Mackinac, also from Pima um, uh, With those Indigenous Services Canada numbers again, uh, when it comes to councillors, it, was it a little more evenly split? About one third of all band councillors are female. Uh, what advice do you have for uh, women that are looking to get involved in, in politics? Well, I started off in politics being being the second woman councillor in my community about uh, 12 years ago when I was in council. Oh, actually more than that. And I was groomed into that position. So the elderly councillors that were there gave me that support. And then eventually I became chief of, uh, of my nation as well. So with that support there and being able to be encouraged that you can take on other roles is very meaningful to, to, to me to pursue that. Yeah. Well, when it comes to Manitoba and uh, women in leadership uh, chiefs, uh, we were doing pretty good there. I think we'd reached like a, a record number of 11 or 12, uh, maybe more, maybe you know uh, of how many uh, women were, were chiefs in Manitoba out of the 63 First Nations. There, I believe, there's 11, and the number I got for the women councillors was at 80 for the Manitoba region. So it'll be exciting to bring them together and to be able to talk politics, right? Uh, I'm sure you'd like to see the numbers all around increase oh, there. Um, sure. How do you do that? Just by encouraging them to give them that, uh, that everybody can make it to leadership that everybody if you put your heart to it that you're able to speak on behalf of your people and on behalf of your children your elders the community social needs that you need in in the community that, and like just to be able to encourage that what were the reasons why you wanted to put your name forward for grand chief for grand chief uh uh, I've been away from politics for quite some time and I, I wanted to bring unity to, to the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs and that we speak in one voice as uh, the Manitoba leaders and that we be able to speak on behalf of, uh, of everybody in, in Manitoba, all First Nations. Like you mentioned, you were just the second uh, female chief uh, in Pima Um What was it at the time then that made you want to step forward? There was a lot of social issues that uh, I believed at that time that as a woman that I'd be able to, 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 uh, to deal with a lot of those issues that came from the community, that came from the young mothers, that came from the younger people that it, they were able to to look up to me that they were able to reach out to me and so again like it took a couple of times for me to throw in my name and eventually I became the second woman chief for Cross Lake and I was always believing in to d defend the land defend the water defend your people uh, quite famously, too, against uh, Manitoba Hydro, yes, uh, the biggest uh, crown corporation in this province. Yeah. Uh, Grand Chief, much more to talk about, including your, your priorities for your new role. We're just going to uh, step aside for a quick break here, and then we'll continue the conversation with the recently elected Grand Chief of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, Kathy Merrick. Stick around. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is Kathy Merrick, the Grand Chief of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, who last month became the first woman to lead the organization. Um, Grand Chief, what are some of the priorities that you'd like to work on during which I guess will be a bit of a, a shortened term, right? This was a, a by-election? Correct. Well, what are some of the priorities that you'd like to work on? 
We all, as First Nations, have a uh, have a lot of social issues in our in our nations, stemming from lack of housing for for our community members and from uh, drugs and alcohol going into the communities. One of the things that's close to my heart is someday to have all our children born in our communities, and to be able to to uh, to assist the forgotten nations where uh, that still have to go and get their water from the lake, and we don't hear very much about them, and so those are the ones that I would like to advocate for, as well as in the north. There's uh, four communities that don't have uh, electricity and an electric, what you call it, a line to their communities. They have to rely on uh, diesel and whatnot. So we need to be able to adv advocate for them to, to eventually get their freedom. It's 2022. Yeah, I mean, mentioning yeah. this, this bit about yeah. hydro, and as we yeah. mentioned uh, before the commercial, you know, you were uh, famously took on Manitoba Hydro. Is, what does it say to you that we still have First Nations in this province that don't have access to hydro, given uh, the role that that Crown Corporation has played in the development of this province? Well, they don't have access to hydro because they're not uh, close to the waters where where the uh, the waters are uh, the, the, that produce the electricity and that's being s sold down south, right? So their hydro doesn't seem to want to give them that uh, opportunity and it's a social determinant to health as well by not having the uh, fundamentals that you need to be to be uh, to live in a good way in a good in a good place in your in your nation you mentioned a couple times unity and that you want to unify yeah, uh, the first I do, nations I do. has amc been uh, ununified uh, recently I, uh, 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 the way i seen it and the way i looked at it like uh, mko is doing their thing the southern chiefs organization as well as doing their thing so uh, i want to come together i want to bring them together and we have met and we have agreed to uh, to have one unified voice for Manitoba. So it was really good to be able to meet with the Grand Chiefs and to be able to, to set parameters as to what we want to do for the Manitoba region. Uh, concerns, you know, how do you hope, I guess, to address some of the concerns that have been raised at the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs? Uh, a lot of women uh, within the grassroots had raised their concerns, their voices about things that, uh, how AMC had ham handled things with the, the former Grand Chief. I would, uh, and I have heard, and, uh, that's something that uh, we very need to work on as, uh, as, as leaders in, in all our nations, as a matter of fact, and to be able to speak to those issues, to be able to bring healing into, into our work. And so nobody needs to, to, to be afraid or nobody needs to, to, uh, to feel that they're, uh, that they're being looked down on or whatnot. So those are the things that I want to bring in. And I think I've done within, a, within, within the past 10 days I've been there. And it's really good to, to be able to, to, to work with all the people that are there. We have a common vision that we be able to provide service to all our, uh, our 62 nations in Manitoba. There was uh, an external consultant's report that was leaked uh, that found AMC that the work culture was often described as toxic there and there was bullying and belittling. Is there a, a role for the Grand Chief, I guess, to play in addressing those types of things? Yes, for sure. For sure. Like if you want your, if you want your staff to work in a safe environment, then the Grand Chief does have a role in terms of ensuring that uh, they're provided with uh, lateral violence workshops, that they do their staff meetings, and to be able to uh, follow the policies. So they're all 
things that are there. It's just a matter of uh, ensuring that they're being followed and implemented. I guess, do you personally feel that AMC's image has been tarnished in recent years? And I guess if you do, how do you turn that around? I, you know, I, I believe uh, things can get better in terms of, uh, of providing service to our communities. And we need to be seeing uh, a lot of uh, organizations were waiting so to, to be able to meet with the AMC, to be able to meet with the new Grand Chief. So now that I'm there, I am meeting with a lot of people, a lot of new people as well that themselves are new to their positions, like the, the mayor and... A lot so, of change in the yeah, province right now. a lot right of now. change, a lot of change, but it's a good change. And uh, as, a, as a First Nation woman taking on this uh, historic historic uh, position is uh, I have to do it well and I will do it well. Uh, Grand Chief, uh, more to talk about here. We're just going to step aside for one more quick break and then we'll continue the conversation with Kathy Merrick, the Grand Chief of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs. Stick around. Welcome we'll back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is the recently elected Grand Chief of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, Kathy Merrick. And uh, Grand Chief Merrick, I first came to know of you and interview you back in 2015, 2016, when Pima Chickamack was dealing with uh, a, a serious uh, suicide crisis at the time, had declared a, a state of emergency, and was back there when then Minister Jane Philpott announced the new hospital there. Uh, that unfortunately wasn't Pima Chickamack's first time dealing with uh, a suicide crisis either. Um, we're now seeing other First Nations I in Manitoba dealing with a new crisis, calling it a uh, pandemic of suffering. Uh, what do you think is behind what's going on? I can, uh, speaking with Pima Chickamack, that was uh, in 2016, was our second time around in terms of uh, mass suicides in our community. And we did call on the governments at that time that came to Cross Lake and that were able to provide service that was much needed that we didn't have and to be able to uh, ensure that uh, the safety of our children was looked after. So now seeing it, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, raising in other communities and and the uh, ISC as well as uh, Health Canada <coughs> excuse me have to be able to provide and to be able to go into those communities and find out themselves as to why these are happening and uh, I'm not sure if they've done that for the latest uh, Red Sucker Lake when they declared a state of emergency and to uh, to ensure that they they go in there, they provide that service for the young people that are crying for, to, to be heard and to be able to uh, provide financial resources to the West First Nations as requested. And they need to do their, their uh, due diligence in terms of uh, all, our, all our people. Um, you know, Manitoba, obviously not the only uh, First Nations in Manitoba, not the only place uh, dealing with this. Um, reports of Saskatchewan, the same mm -hmm. thing, mental health, uh, illness, addictions, suicide. Um, but, you know, having been a leader in, in Pima Chickamack and living through two of those crises, uh, do you have uh, any insight yourself on, on what can be done here? Well, uh, the, the thing that we heard most was uh, of, our, of our youth being bored, of our youth being having nothing to do, right? And what we, uh, what we have done was to be able to take them out on the land. It's such a healing process that we be able to do that and that we be able to entertain them in, in whatever which, ever which way that they that they need and to be listened to. We have to listen to our young people because they're the ones that are going to be our future leaders and we have to ensure that uh, what they need to say that we need to hear from them. 
accessing uh, care at home was something that uh, was brought up at that time and uh, you know was something that there'd been plans on the books for years and years for uh, a state-of-the-art uh, medical facility yes. in Pimichikamac. Uh, uh, maybe a bit on that fight uh, and um, I guess uh, where things are at with that state-of-the-art health facility. Well, uh, uh, we built a new health centre with uh, Health Canada funding. The province didn't come to the table with a dime in, in that uh, process. So when we were doing our work, it was both with the, uh, the province and Health Canada. So eventually Health Canada put in $40 million and then we went back and they got $15 million for the residences. So uh, we built it and we built it that where we can build an extension to it once uh, if the province ever comes on board. And so that was a, a really hard for me to, to when I was in leadership because one of the things that I wanted to ensure was that our children be born at home. And our children, all our children, I don't know if there's anywhere in, in Manitoba, in any First Nation where the children are actually born in their communities, right? So the majority of uh, the children from Cross Lake have Thompson on their birth certificates, right? So there's no, um, uh, for them to, 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 to be identified as born in Cross Lake, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if they were, I'm sure it wasn't on purpose. No, it wasn't, but it shouldn't be now mm -hmm. either, right? It's 2022. We should be able to ensure that we can provide those services for, for our communities. And to be able to bring them home and to be, be, for, to be able to, for them to, uh, to have ownership to, to their communities. And if they're born out, you know, we, we don't celebrate life. Right, uh, and, and there's teachings to that. When a, a young baby is born, there's a teaching to that. So we're not able to do that in our communities because most likely it's the mother, she's there, she goes out for confinement for, for two weeks. So she, most likely she leaves her other children, she leaves her husband, who's there with her mm -hmm. when she's gonna be having a baby, right? There's nobody to celebrate that life. But when we lose people in terms of people that are passing, they come home to the community. So everybody is able to participate in that process of uh, assisting the people when they're, when they're going through their mourning processes and whatnot in community. So we need to balance it. We need to balance between life and death. And uh, so hopefully someday, and I hopefully for Cross Lake that we be able to have births in our, our nation and that we be able to celebrate those teachings with our, with our young, young ones and with the mothers as well. Well, Grand Chief, when they uh, do the grand opening of the new facility, I hope we get an invite for that. Yes, love to for, go back. Sure, for sure. Uh, we are all out of time, but uh, certainly thank you for your time and, and wish you all the best in the new role in the days ahead. Okay, great. Thank you so much for having me. And that is all the time for this week's show. You can catch up on any episodes you may have missed by visiting our website, aptnnews.ca. The show and past episodes are also available as podcasts. You can find those wherever you download your podcasts. I'm Dennis Ward. Thanks for being with us. Have a great night. <laughs>